It's always exciting to receive something from Gideon. And let's see what I ordered. Check it out. I, I got the clear ultimate 2 plus L. And I ordered a, a blue case shell. And I ordered a few Ultimate 64 badges. Which are really cool with the one with the Elite. And that was it. So we'll have to check it out. I do like the clear shell. Ooh, it has a nice sticker in the back too. Right there. Oh, you can see the battery right there too. I didn't even notice that. As you can see, I purchased the 1541 Ultimate 2 Plus L, not because I needed one, but just primarily to support Gideon and the amazing work he's doing over there. My primary device now is the Ultimate 64 and the Elite, which already contain this functionality. This is mostly the same cartridge as the 2 Plus. It's just a manufacturing change to more easily and economically source the motherboards, is my understanding. Having said that, I did run into a minor issue out of the box that I'll demonstrate now. So I'm gonna turn on the C64. So you can hear the sound that it makes. The Ultimate 2 Plus L is plugged in. But then I'm going to go ahead and push the middle button to enter into the USB contents into my flash drive. And the first thing I notice is that when you go in and you try to play some things like your music or your SID files, by default, Instead of playing the main tune, for example, it just goes right back to the menu, or right back to the logon screen. The other thing is, if you try to play a PRG file, any old PRG file, I guess, but... It does that. And so I was thinking, wow, I thought this thing was supposed to be 100% the same or compatible or I didn't think this uh, Ultimate 2 Plus L was going to require any changes to make things work but the first thing I realized is if you hit the middle button and then go into the to the menus shift F1 go down to C64 cartridge settings and cartridge settings I found a spot on the firmware update. So this might be as a result of the firmware updates that I'm on different firmware on the two on the Ultimate 2 Plus than I am on this new cartridge, the 2 Plus L. So I noticed that on the old one it was at 96 nana. This this setting right here, CPU address valid after PHI2, it's supposed to be set to 96. But I realized just about any setting lowering it will make it work. I've, I've tried it on 80, I've tried it on a couple of settings, but I, I thought 96 is close to 100. So I switched it to that, hit run stop to save the changes to the flash. And then when I run my PRG files, they now load. So that's a tip I wanted to show also, the music files will also play now. So there it is playing the SID files. Alright, so I don't know if it's working this way be simply because of my particular setup. I'm using a Commodore 64C or if it's because I'm NTSC, or I'm not sure what the timing is, some sort of a timing issue. Let's read about it right now. So I stumbled across this uh, firmware installation page when I, when I was looking into that issue. 
And if you scroll down the page, you'll come across this cartridge timing table right here. And this was very interesting. It says, one of the things that often goes wrong is the cartridge timing. With the introduction of the U2 plus L, the cartridge timing has been revised. This is not always an improvement as has shown by some experiences from different users. Also, some firmware releases had quite strongly C128 biased settings, which did not work well for many C64s, especially the NTSC ones. This is certainly an aspect that needs improvement with maybe some automatic calibration. For best results for now, choose the following timings. You can find these in the config menu, F2, under C64 and cartridge settings. For kernel replacement, you may need the 80 nanosecond setting for PHI2. Kernel replacement on a Commodore 128 may work for PAL models with the shadow RAM disabled and high timing values. Please help to extend this table to SX64 and possibly different board revisions. And then he goes on to discuss the changes in 3.10i compared to 3.10, which is the firmware. If you would take some time to check the commit history of the repository at GitHub, you may find over 500 commits since the last release version of 3.10a. This is a lot more than it usually takes to release a next firmware version. The version is still 3.10, so there are not many functional changes, yet files have been touched, updated, or just made compatible with the new Ultimate 2 Plus L hardware. It was more difficult than expected to get the Lattice FPGA to work correctly and keep compatibility with the existing hardware platforms. On top of the new introduction of the Ultimate 2 Plus L, there is still a need to support the good old 1541 Ultimate 2, or simply U2. There have always been issues with the MicroBlaze processor and the compiler from Z Xilinux. Every version of Xilinux compiler had different bugs that caused the MicroBlaze based firmware to be broken in one way or another. Since the U2 Plus L runs well on the RISC 5, it was decided to upgrade the CPU inside the U2 and ditch the MicroBlaze forever. Unfortunately, the CPU that was chosen to run inside the U2 Plus L did not fit in the same space as the MicroBlaze clone, so I decided to write my own RISC 5 compatible CPU. This is the CPU that will be used from now on in the 1541 Ultimate 2. How amazing is that? He's like, oh, you know what? This doesn't quite work for me. I'll just do my own. And so there's a lot of information here on this page. And then I can see here using this table and it's going to be probably expanded over time. This is how you set the timings. Earlier in the video, I confused this, the, the 2 Plus and the 1541 U2. Again, I want to stress what an amazing product this is. It allows you to extend the functionality of your Commodore 64, adding tons of features, including supporting external flash drives to load your own program ROMs. Many years ago, I did a review of the 1541 Ultimate 2 Plus, so I won't be doing a complete review of this product, but even if I did, it couldn't possibly top the video put out by the Retro Shack just a couple of weeks ago, so go check that out. That's all I have for now. Thanks for watching.